Peace, family. Brother Derek Muhammad, and I'm happy to be back. Let's get into it. Today's video is appropriately titled Coon. That's right. C-O-O-N exclamation point. My good friend Willie D of the Ghetto Boys recently put out a single called Coon, where he called out various black folk who habitually sell their people out. And the way he defined the coon is this. Willie D said that if your criticism of the black community outweighs your contribution of the black community, then you are a coon. So these are signs that you might be dealing with a coon. You might be. I didn't say that you are, but you might be. Let's go after them. Number one, their use of language. When you're talking to a coon, someone who suffers, suffers from self-hatred, they always speak independently of their people. This is a black person you're talking to. But when they talk about other black people, they use words like they, them. Or they say what black folks need to do is this or that when they themselves are blacker than the ace of spades. So always look for the language because in their language, they'll always separate themselves from their people. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it like this. He said that no individual can ever rise above the condition of his or her people. And this includes the coon. Number two. A coon minded person believes that voting is the answer to everything. So if you go to them and say, oh, excuse me, Mr. Coon, I got beat up by the police last night. I was racially profiled. They pulled me out of my car and they beat the hell out of me. He'll ask you a question like, let me ask you this. Did you go vote? And if you say no, he'll look at you and say, well, you don't have the right to complain. They believe that voting is the answer to everything. Now, I believe that voting is very important, but it was it is only one tool in a big toolbox that we could use to advance our cause and advance our agenda toward liberation. Voting is not the answer to everything, but they make it appear as if though it is the answer to everything when they themselves do not want to face hard problems and come up with creative solutions. Number three, a coon is always name dropping. When you talk to he or she, they always talk about how they rub elbows with the mayor and they sip tea with the senator and they hung out with the governor. And that's their attempt to elevate themselves above you in a conversation. And they do it by name dropping. And see, when you don't have confidence in yourself and you have not built your own name as such to where it is respected and honored, you feel like you got to borrow other people's names. This is one of the things that the coon does. And I need you all to be very, very aware of this. Um, number four, the whisperer. See, when you're talking to a coon and you say a word like white people, they'll go, shh. Or if they're talking to you, they'll go, you know, um, unemployment is double the national average. It's hard for black people to get jobs in America, but it's not that difficult for white people. And they'll start whispering and there probably aren't even any white people around. So I call him the whisperer. Don't talk about reparations. They start whispering. Don't talk about slavery. They start whispering. So when you are dealing with a whisperer, you got to look at them twice and say, hmm, I wonder if this is a coon that I'm dealing with. Number five. The coon is always overly critical of anything that is black owned, anything black managed, anything black run. They are going to be overly critical of it. And there's nothing wrong with being critical. There's nothing wrong when the criticism is constructive. But if you talk to somebody and every single time that you bring up something or somebody that is associated with blackness, all they have is criticism. Trust me, brothers and sisters, there's a very good chance that you are dealing with a coon. Now, the next one is the professional apologist. Doesn't matter what a white person does. What's her name? Paula Dean. 
Yeah, Paula Dean had just as many black people defending her as she had black people who were offended by her using the N word. I know I know that's a controversial subject for some of you all, but white people who make clearly racist statements, clearly racist overtures, and more importantly, execute clearly racist moves. The black apologists will always come up with a way to apologize for them. And they usually do it by making a comparative analysis of black people's behavior. For instance, if they say, well, Paula Dean used the N word. Yeah, but look how many times we use it in our own community. Well, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but you're comparing apples to oranges. I don't want to get into a debate over the N word. Just watch out for that coon because he's always apologizing for the actions of white people and other racist individuals. Now, the next one is this, the reverse race card. The coon always uses the reverse race card. He always tries to find a way to place the burden of racism on black people versus white people. Now, you have to look at the definition of the word racist. Racism is prejudice plus power. In other words, in order for you to truly be a racist, you have to have the power to oppress the people that you believe are less than you are. And as a people, we don't even have that power. And so we can't be racist. So they use words like black supremacy. You got to stop teaching black supremacy. Nobody teaches black supremacy in America. What we're trying to do is we're trying to undo the teaching of black inferiority. So I don't want to go too far along those lines, but watch out for them because they are always claiming the reverse race card when they're trying to defend those that they're trying to defend. Now, last two. The coon always wholeheartedly believes that the white man's ice is colder. That means you can have a white owned Starbucks on one corner and you can have a black owned coffee shop on the other one. He will always go this way. I don't care. Listen, the black owned coffee shop could be open 24 seven and the white owned coffee shop may be open at nine o'clock. If he wants a coffee cu cu cup of coffee at eight thirty, he going to stand. <laughs> he going to stand over here for 30 minutes and wait until this one um, opens. Why? Because his mind is programmed to believe that their ice is colder in this particular instance. Their coffee is hotter and tastes better. And the last trait that you have to look for is the coon always believes that he or she can buy respect and honor. And that's because the coon has a price. When I say the coon has a price, that means that they will compromise their principles. They'll compromise their integrity and they'll subjugate their blackness in order to move ahead. And they always have a price. They can be bought and sold. And because they can be bought and sold, they believe that we all can be bought and sold. So I want you all to be very, very careful out here. And when you're in conversation, always measure, you know, the person that you're talking to with some of these traits right here. Who knows? You might be talking to a coon. And if you are, see, I am of the belief that there are certain coons that can be reformed. So try to talk some sense into him or her first. And if not, if you find that you can't do that, then you need to hit 90 going north. Get away from them as fast as you can. Peace.